Hello, my name is Dr. Frank Romano. I'm a member of the U.S. and French bars and former associate professor of the University of Paris. It is urgent that we find a solution to this humanitarian disaster <clears throat> unfolding before our eyes in Gaza and in the West Bank. Let's, let's first see things in perspective. In this recent Gaza war, atrocities have been committed on both sides. And later, when the dust settles, we'll know the truth about what's happened. But for now, <clears throat> let's look at the roots of the conflict. Palestinians from Gaza and the West Bank have been subject to a very vicious and cruel occupation for many years. That has created food, water, medical supplies, shortages, among others, especially in Gaza, exacerbated, exacerbated by the Israeli blockade. The high unemployment rate and repression of the local economies, especially in Gaza, have led to great poverty. That has also led to strong feelings of hopelessness since many Palestinians believe, no matter how much they try, or how much education they receive, there's no hope for them. So again, let's keep things in perspective. The October 7th attack by Hamas was a manifest manifestation of intense frustration, economic repression, and asphyxiation due to the blockade and the continued occupation of Palestine, including the West Bank. It was also due to continued aggressive intrusions into the Temple Mount area, near the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, as well as the constant and vicious attacks of Palestinian by settlers who are often aided and abetted by the Israeli IDF. So you could say that October 7th was a response to years of asphyxiating occupation that pushed Hamas into a corner, made them like cornered a person or like a cornered beast. What happens? What happens when you corner someone or an animal? They lash out and the vicious cycle of violence continues over and over again. So the October 7th attack by Hamas is understandable, even predictable. Any atrocities, however, committed then or before that by Palestinians, especially targeting civilians, are not justified. Nor are they justified atrocities committed by Israelis, including settlers, especially targeting civilians, since the 1948 Nakba. All that vicious cycle of violence, however, feeds the Hamas approach, and that is to put push, and that is, to push Israel into the sea. That vicious cycle of violence also feeds the fanatic Zionist approach, which is to create purely a purely Jewish state and get rid of all the Palestinians and all the non-Jews. Let's look at the international courts. They have failed the Palestinians in particular. The International Criminal Court prosecutor Karim Khan has done nothing to prosecute the Israeli agents and their accomplices, notably the U.S. agents, for war crimes committed against the Palestinian people. That is true, in spite of absolute clear evidence of severe war crimes, including genocide committed by Israeli agents and their accomplices against the Palestinian people. The ICC is thus overly politicized and not impartial. For example, only one year after Russia invaded uh, and, and occupied parts of the Ukraine, the ICC issued arrest warrants against Putin for alleged war crimes. Israeli agents have committed war crimes against the Palestinian people since 1948, and no arrest warrants have been issued against the Israeli, Israeli criminals, nor their accomplices. This is just another ignominious example of actions or omissions to act by, 
by another important world court, the International Court of Justice. The ICJ hasn't done much better than the ICC. Both have quite negligent have been quite negligent in their duties to adjudicate the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Let's look at a recent decision by the ICJ, uh, namely the one of the 26th of January, where the ICJ ruled that it is at least plausible that Israel is carrying out genocide against the Palestinian people in Gaza and has therefore specified certain measures that Israel must take to prevent genocide and allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. But since that decision which is over a month ago, Israel has done little or nothing to comply with it. This ruling, however, has value since, at least for once, it holds Israel accountable. Accountable for the egregious crimes committed against the Palestinian people, thereby unmaking the charades of immunity that surrounds Israel. In addition, this time, the U.S. could not impose a veto, as it ha does regularly before the U.N. Security Council. And when it tries to adopt resolutions, especially when it tries to adopt resolutions to curb the Israeli massacre of Palestinians and land grabs of their property. The ICJ's decision was, however, blatantly weak and indecisive, since it failed to order a suspension of the war nor even a much-needed temporary ceasefire, nor did it condemn Israel for committing genocide, and that in, in the face of clear evidence, there's clear evidence of genocide. Even Bernie Sanders was skittish and fearsome to articulate the word genocide in a recent speech. You know that genocide has been a long-term policy of Israel, Mr. Sanders, to eradicate Palestinians from the Holy Land. Come on, Sanders, wake up, gut up, get down on it, and admit the truth. To emphasize this point, Israeli government and military officials have not hidden their genocidal intent toward the Palestinian people. On October 9th, the Israeli defense minister, Yoav Gallant, has said, we are fighting uh, human animals and we are acting accordingly. On October 29th, Netanyahu used Judaic scripture to justify the killing of Palestinians. He said, and I quote, You must remember that Amalek, what Amalek did to you, uh, says our Holy Bible. He said, quoting a verse, Now go and smite Amalek, kill both man and woman, infant. Another example in November was Yitshaf Crozier, a member of Knesset, called for Gaza to be flattened, and that for residents, there's only one sentence, and that is death. Finally, a member of Netanyahu's cabinet, Minister Amikal Eliyahu, said the unthinkable. He said recently that one of Israel's options in the war against Hamas could be to drop a nuclear bomb on the Gaza Strip. Anyway, these are failings of the International Criminal Court, and uh, other things I wanted to bring your attention to, and that we will in subsequent videos, is the actual origin of the conflict is not what most of the press specifies, that is to say, the attack on October 7th. The origin of the suffering of the people and the frustration uh, and, the, and the starving uh, and the injuries and the deaths, especially in Gaza, are caused by the Israeli occupation. Thank you.